Ooh, and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And boy, you know what movie I actually finally sat down and watched that I've had sitting for God knows how long. It's one of those movies where I've actually multiple bought it. Like, I had it on VHS, and then never got around to watching it, and then I ended up buying it on Blu-ray, and then it took me a while to still get around to it. But the movie that I watched was the ever-classic Spartacus... You know, the Stanley Kubrick movie. I think the last one he made in the U.S. before he, like, jumped ship and said, Fuck this place! I'm going to Britain! Suck my dick, everybody! What, you don't think I can make movies? Well, fuck you! Guess what? They'll let me do anything over there! I just want want to say, uh, people at home probably can't tell, but there's a big pause for me because you were... There's a big delay. Which is one movie I saw, and then there's this big pause. Like, the the, the screen froze. I'm like, fuck. Like... Sparkus, so the Bacardio catches up, so then it just, I just, I didn't catch all of it, I just caught, suck my dick, I'm going over to Britain. Well, that's what Stanley Kubrick said, but, you know, as he left. Yeah. I think Spartacus was boat, his last. he didn't take a plane. It was, well, yeah. it was an old wooden British boat. Yeah, they, they're like, come here, come here, Stanley, we'll serve you great over here, you can make movies for us in England. Sir Stanley, maybe he got knighted before he died, who knows, I mean, I think he gotta be know. British in order for that to happen. Yeah, but he's Stanley Kubrick. Who would not fucking knight Stanley Kubrick? You know I don't know. I mean? He made a movie that got he, he made a movie that got banned in in England. Oh yeah, so. that's true. They're like <laughs> that one part. They's like, do we got Stan? We got fucking Stanley Kubrick over here. He's gonna make great movies for us. Stanley, what are you gonna make? Uh, I was about making this one called Clockwork Orange. But well, what's that about? It's about a bunch of gang members in England that go around beating and raping people and fucking killing hobos and shit. <laughs> oh, oh, that sounds pleasant. Is you trying to feel sorry for one? Yeah, I find it pretty fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but feel like that movie is, in some ways, just meant to be a fucked up comedy, just because... I think it's such just, a dark comedy, it has to be. There's no way it can't be. I mean, I know that the guy that wrote the book, like, that's actually based off, like, true events. Like, he actually was, like, a bunch of British gang members or whatever came into his house and, like, and fucking raped his wife and punched him in the dick and whatnot and stole oh, some shit that. and went out. Yeah, so... Maybe to him it's not, but clearly to Stanley Kubrick it's got to be a fucking comedy. Well, it, it's just the way it shocks. There's so many long, lingering, awkward things in the movie. Like, all right, for spoilers for Clockwork Orange, when he goes back to the guy whose house he vandalized and raped the wife and all that, when he goes back to that guy's house mm-hmm. and doesn't realize it at first... They just show the dude in the wheelchair just sitting there reading, and there's this long, just, uh, 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 in the background, like, what the fuck is going on? That slowly pans out. Then he has, like, this built, like, manservant named Julian in, like, fucking short shorts, a pink and tight as fuck shirt, and glasses. Like, no way, this guy is not, like, a fuck boy. And... <laughs> It's, it's his manservant. He says, like, Julian, when you get the door, will you carry the poor boy in? And often he'd just be carrying the guy into the room. Cause, <laughs> like, like, just weird things. Like, it, it's so surreal. There's no way things that aren't intended to be funny. Even just the way he's staring at him when he's sitting there eating his porridge. Like, he knows, I know it's you, motherfucker. I know it's you. But he's sitting there just, like, scowling. Like... <laughs> No, that is totally true. There, There is a bunch of weird fucking funny stuff like that. And you know what's kind of strange is there's not really another Stanley Kubrick movie that has that same type of, like, full-on humor in it. You know, that, that movie, it's, like, almost made as half comedy. But going back to, like, Spartacus, though, that was one of those movies, like, it always sat there. It's like, I never watch it. It's like, you know, you know, you need to sit down and sometimes watch these movies. But sometimes you kind of go, well, I need to set aside over three hours and... Make sure I got nothing better to do. I mean, hell, this movie fucking took me like three days to watch. <laughs> it was definitely like an epic. But it's so fucking good. It's like one of those ones, like, those are the kind of movies you watch those ones, and you go, gosh, like, they, they can't even make movies like this anymore. Just these, like, massive movies where it's like, if there's a hundred fucking guys running down the hill on horses, you know there's a hundred fucking guys running down the hills on horses. Like, I went back and I watched Justice League again in theaters, and... Just as good as fucking always. Like, second time round, it's like, dude, I'm still fucking amazing. Like, I, I can't figure out why nobody, like, really likes this. Or, well, people like it, but I can't figure out why it didn't, like, go over as well as it should. But still, because I was watching Spartacus, and then you kind of look at some of those scenes there, and you're like, you know, 
They're cool and all, but God, nothing really beats like the old fashioned when the movie was fucking real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's the only downfall of kind of movies nowadays. It's like they, they look cool, but you, you, you know, at the end of the day, you're watching a giant cartoon. You know what I mean? With people that have live action talking. At the end of the day, that's what that's what the movies are. It's a giant cartoon with live action talking. Every every movie nowadays. You know what I mean? Except for unless it's a Woody Allen picture or a Quentin Tarantino picture or something like that. You pretty much all these movies are just giant fucking cartoons. And then a live action talk scene that has no background, but yeah, if it's it's if it's, if it's genre, definitely. But yeah, but like still, it's just one of those ones. Like man, you watch like these old movies. And it's just like, I mean, there's a part where these like, you know the slaves are all breaking out. Sparkles like fucking freedom, kill these Romans, and like they're like climbing up this fence, and this fence goes over, and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, is that like part? Of, that must be part of the stunt. But there's this poor bastard underneath that fence that kind of gets smashed, you know. And like nowadays, it'd be like, oh, it's just a CG dummy that goes there, but. In the olden days, it'd be like, okay, I got the suit on. Hopefully, it's padded enough. All right, we'll fucking find out. Let's cut it. Let's see what happens. We go and shoot it once. <laughs> we don't want Stanley spending any well, more time. Well, it's like in Ben Hur. It's it's like in Ben Hur when the one dude is actually trampled to death by the horses, and they're like, keep that shit in there. That's believable. That's what Jesus yeah. would have wanted. <laughs> exactly. No, that's the thing is, you just don't get that kind of stuff anymore. It's like. I mean, it went up kind of a wise, I guess you could say, to about, like, the 90s, but, I mean, that's, like, the ending time period of that. But even still, that's not still nearly as common. Even though it's a little bit more modern, the closest thing we have to it is Dunkirk. Because that's the thing the movie was all totally um, advertising itself as. Like, no CG, all real planes. Even some of the doubles you see down there in a line on the beach, those are actually cardboard cutouts. Yeah. Yeah, Dunkirk's the closest thing. Now, it's a little bit different because that's like a more modern war one. I was kind of thinking of old stuff, but but no, that's definitely true. That is there. But yeah, it's just that's one of also ones one of those things. Go ahead. Oh, as I say, it's just something you like. That's one thing I just kind of miss. It's almost like, and I know that it's, the farther we go into the future, the less and less I think that's going to be. And I think it's due to a couple things. It's not, I mean, sometimes people can go like, oh, it's just, they got the CG. Of course they want to use it. I'm like, I think it's also legalities. You know what I mean? Like, the more CG you use, it's not like the CG is going to sue you, like, for, like, when you get fucking trampled by a horse or, you know, any other of those kind of issues are going to happen. Or you got to, you know, if you got a cast of a thousand extras, you know, in the olden days, it'd be like, hey, you fucks, get out there. You want that dollar or not? Nowadays, it's probably like, oh, well, I need to have yeah. benefits and all this stuff. And you're like, fuck you. We're going to CG you all, your bastards in there. We got Bob over here. He can make a lot of faces. Guess what? We're just going to use him as CG reference. He's going to be a thousand extras. Fuck you guys. So you can almost say actors and, you know, extras and everything probably did it to themselves. But still, it's kind of like a bummer. I think as like the audience member and the spectacle, it's just gotten like Spartacus. There's some of these scenes in there. It's just like they're fucking phenomenal looking. Just like so brilliant. I mean, that's like how a lot of those movies. That's like Lawrence of Arabia. That's like how King of Kings is. That's how, you know, there's, you know, of course, Ben-Hur. You mentioned that one too. Like that time period, they just made those like ginormous fucking epic pictures of just you know big battles classic you know warfare and so on i mean i think the last time i mean those kind of movies now they i mean they don't even feel that big anymore i don't i don't mean the ones you just named off whenever someone tries to do like a sword and sandals movie or something like that it just doesn't feel that big because it actually feels like oh that's a cg landscape with a bunch of little cg dudes like running in at each other which i get i totally understand why you already named off all the reasons why they kind of do that now Mm -hmm. but at the same time dunkirk was one of the last ones i could think of it had like a bunch of real shit going on and then before i mean there's probably other examples before that but i mean i mean i know this movie's not historically accurate or anything because it's not you know it's it's sci-fi but i mean some of the kevin costner movies um uh um postman Postman, yeah, because you had a lot of fuckers running at each other on horseback and that. Well, that's, and, you know, that's probably like some the end Civil of the War era movies. Was all those Kevin like, Costner movies that cost way too much. And I think that's kind of the reason why. It's, it's like you can't really technically make a movie like that anymore. Because here's the thing. It's like, you know, you know when you watch like a movie from like the 50s and back? And when they have the credits roll, it's like there's maybe like 40 people on the list. You're like, I know for a fact there was way more than 40 people to put this movie together. But it's like... I think there's just that time period. You just didn't have to pay people nearly as much. And I know that sounds like fucking <laughs> like it's some libertarian person. You're like, see, movies were better when you didn't have to pay people, you know, a minimum wage. You just had to pay them whatever the fuck you felt like that week. 
he said from his gated community in Puerto Rico. Yeah. See, you know, you want good movies? Well, you gotta, like, not pay them anything. But they'll be grateful to be in there. Shit, I, when I was a kid, I used to just, like, get trampled by horses. And, you know, I was, t- took my dollar and I went home. Why don't the little fuckers know I was fucking want to grateful. <laughs> no, um, I was gonna say that, uh, yeah, I was, I was about to, like, add what you said right there. I think it's because a lot of movies, aside from Postman, I think a lot of movies like these big budget movies, just if they didn't do good, you were fucked. And something like, uh, I mean, well, Citizen Kane, I mean, that was different reasons, but th- like the studio RKO, they went under after that movie came out. Like, or smells like, it's the most brilliant movie you'll ever see, but it will fucking ruin this company. And then. You know why? Because fuck the newspaper. Yeah, I said it. Fuck him. Oh, it's awesome. That's that's who's gonna fucking advertise this for us. We don't live in. The, there's no fucking internet. Yeah, well, I'll fucking invent it by the time. Oh shit! I guess it's not time yet. <laughs> I thought that it was it was Plan B after I was Unicron. I was gonna <laughs> learn the ways of the of the Decepticons. Yeah, I didn't use their power. <laughs> he was really my that movie. Time, that one wasn't he? Yeah. But um, no, uh, I was gonna say that uh, regarding uh. Fuck, well, fuck, what was I going to say? What was I going to say, man? Uh, epic yeah, yeah, movies, yeah. big budgets. Epic, that's right. Well, I think that there's there's also like a Sam Peckinpah movie that it was the movie he did, I want to say it was two movies away before, it was one or two movies away before Wild Bunch. And he like he was doing a little bit of TV and he was doing some other Western and people were like, oh, let's give this kid like a, like a, like a huge ass budget. He's going to do this Australian war movie with kind of, it kind of, it's kind of like a Western, sort of, because it's in that kind of setting, but it's an Australian war movie, and it stars, uh, it stars, um, God, uh, Plan of the Apes, original. Uh, oh, um, uh, fuck, um, and um, Charleston Heston? Charleston Heston, yeah. And or Charlton, they I'm were making the movie. Charleston Heston, like, making his fucking name rhyme together. Charlton Heston. <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm like, ah, he probably knows better than I do. Um, there's at some point, like, you know... Peckinpah and Heston were butting heads. They weren't getting along. And it was during... This is like one of those stories you never hear. I may have said this before on the podcast. You never hear this kind of story in tel- in, in television or movies anymore. Peckinpah being a drunk is like, You know what? Here's what I think of your fucking performance today. Walks up to the camera they've been using all day. Takes a big old fat piss on it. <laughs> Heston comes running by on a horseback... And just chucks a fucking spear at him, barely misses him, and like from that moment on, we respected one another. <laughs> See, because nowadays nobody would fucking do because then some some little bitch would try to sue the other one, and then it just become this big lawsuit. Where in the olden days, that's like how men were. You know what I mean? One guy pisses on the other guy's work, the other guy throws a fucking spear at him, and you know to you know try to kill him. And from that point on, it was okay. It was all fucking handshakes and beers from now on out. I wish that happened with David O. Russell and George Clooney. <laughs> well, that's like one of the last stories where it's kings. like a fucking director punches out his actor. Because <laughs> I, I love how well, George plus, Clooney was like fucking, because like David O. Russell's just like fucking chewing out. What was he chewing out? Like his extras and chewing it was like out. a key grip or it was Yeah, he was just was going small. like, yeah, almost like too like creative control director, which is funny because it's like, dude, this is like your fucking third movie. Like, what, calm the fuck down. You haven't really made anything big yet, and he's already fucking taking hold of this. And then George Clooney's being the nice guy to everybody. He's like, fuck you, George Clooney, you pretty fuck. I don't even want you. Fuck your ER. <laughs> he wanted Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Well, like Three Kings, I'll say I love that movie, but apparently he did not want to do that movie and did not. I think it was one of those movies he had the idea, and then once George Clooney got in, get, got in on it, and other things started to fall apart, and he was being all kind of stylish because that movie is '90s as fuck. But that's why I like it. Yeah, it's just I love that so, movie. It's so very. It, it feels even though it doesn't, even though you know it, it has its own identity, it kind of has that very early like. Robert Rodriguez, Tarantino kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it's got a little bit of that going on. I mean, like like many movies did have towards the end of the 90s, it was like everybody was looking to get that next Tarantino style slash, I think Robert Rodriguez, but that was, I still think they're always going for the, everybody wanted the next Tarantino. That, that was the key thing people were looking for, and they almost wanted to use other directors to kind of get that direction. But, but yeah, you know, you kind of got things like that where, if fucking director and an actor go at and everything like that. 
and I think that probably happened back in the day, like, you know, probably quite often. I know, like, Errol Flynn, if, you know, had problems with certain, you know, directors that were kind of assholes and so on. You know, you read about in their books. But I think also with these movies, like, okay, here's a movie I watched somewhat, that's somewhat recent, and I got it, like, for next to nothing. It was, like, a dollar or something on fucking Blu-ray. I felt bad for it, but... You could tell this was a movie that somebody's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make a big fucking movie. It's going to have tons of money being spent. We're going to get our main actors in it. You know, we're going to get fucking Wolverine in this movie. And we're going to go for it. And I don't think it did well. And I think no matter what, it's like, you just can't. There's certain movies that you can't make for, like, a ton of money and just expect the money to come back. I just think it's hard nowadays, you know? Unless you got fucking Avengers characters in it, it's just not going to work out. I was just going to say, um, I, I know what you mean, but when you said it was like $1 and I just felt bad for it, so I figured I'd get it. As if it's like a fucking puppy looking at you from the discount rack. Like, take me home, take me home. Like, uh, uh, do I take home uh, the French-Canadian version of uh, Blade 3 or uh, or some straight cool cover. dvd Val Kilmer movie? Yeah. <laughs> Well, this was beyond the straight to DVD, and it had a sad looking Hugh Jackman looking at me, and I thought I should take that poor Hugh Jackman home and watch him. And it also had a sad Nicole Kidman on the cover, too, I guess you could say. But they didn't look sad on the cover, they just needed a place to be. And that's that movie Australia. Did you ever see that mm. fucking picture? I didn't hear it was that good, but Dude, maybe it, is it was. Dude, it's fucking amazing. Like, it is mind blowing how fucking I'm good so- it is. Why am I surprised that's your answer? Yeah. Dude, I mean. You- it's in, like, speaking of, like, you know, Spartacus, and speaking of movies like 90s Kevin Costner films, like Postman, and fucking Dances with Wolves, and, you know, these huge movies, even fucking Wyatt Earps and, like, that kind of huge feel. That's, like, a ginormous feeling Western. But, um, this movie, Australia, and it's just fucking three and a half hour fucking epic. I mean, and it's, like... Jesus multiple- Christ, three and a half? Oh, dude, it's, like, multiple genres. Get- dude, I fucking learned all kinds of historical things about Australia. I didn't even fucking know. Did you know that after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese went by and bombed the living daylights out of, like, a big city in Australia there? I knew they had occupation there. I didn't know they wouldn't have bombed it. Yeah, well, they didn't have occupation there, but they went in there and just fucking, like, annihilated. I mean, like, burnt it to... Or- Bombed it to the ground. I guess not really burnt it to the ground, but bombed it to the ground. I thought whatever. They, I thought they. I thought they. I thought they took. They thought they took hold of a city or two, or like were like had a base there or something like that. I don't think so. Um, but um, maybe not. But this movie, like, it literally starts off like almost like it's a western at first, and then it kind of progresses into like a war movie. It's kind of interesting. It's like it is first. It's this big cattle drive, and you know, Nicole Kidman's like, "Oh, my fucking husband got killed down there, and I'll just go over and take his ranch." I'm from England. Let me go down there and show these fucking Australians what it's all about. And of course, Hugh Jackman's like, you know, that um, what do you call him? the head cowboy? Again, um, I don't know, the cattle hand, something like that, or I don't really know what the technical okay, well, whatever. Is. I guess that didn't matter. But like, still, whole point is, is like, you get this movie and it's got like, you know, the indigenous people in it, and it shows their kind of ways, and it shows like, you know, the jerk off fucking like ghetto Australian people and it's got all these just different things going on but no that movie was fucking amazing and I remember yeah like I remember just kind of hearing like people just kind of gave it like eh whatever it's okay nobody really saw it you know movie probably cost like 120 plus million dollars I mean I kid you not like you look at the spectacle in this thing I mean it's got CG and stuff in it too I mean it's a fucking modern movie but still this movie had that scope that's like missing in so many movies nowadays like movies nowadays they all feel like they're like box films without being box films you know what I mean like, it doesn't really matter what kind of movie you're watching. Like, you could kind of see the strings. And I mean, like, they've gotten better about it, but you just kind of look at a movie and you just go, well, there's a bunch of guys standing on a green screen sound stage, going back and forth, and they're just intercutting, you know, backgrounds together and special effects and so on. You know what I mean? You could kind of see that they're not actually out on an island. They're not actually, like, on this big plane. That's not actually an army coming after them. You know what I mean? And I mean, good, still good movies, yeah. but at the end of the day... There's something special about when you get those movies that have that big feel. And this movie in Australia had a bunch of that kind of real stuff in it. You know, these real things going on and so on. I think one of the last movies to really do that was, I'm, sh- I'm sure someone correct me. I know we said Dunkirk already, but bef- even before that, I think another one of the last movies to do like these big, grand scale, sword and sandal epic movies, even though this one definitely had some CG in it, was uh, Alexander. Because Alexander oh, apparently yeah. almost... That apparently almost bankrupted Warner Brothers when that came out because it was really fucking expensive and it did not do that good in theaters and it got swarmed by the critics. And then there's also uh, keep in a, mind that's just that's the a great cut. There's a three. There's a, there's a 
there's a three and a half hour cut of the movie as well. So yeah, the final cut one, one, which is like the better. I, don't, I actually don't know. That's the one I watched originally. I never watched any of the other ones. I just went straight to the final cut. I'm like, that's got to be the one that Oliver Stone intended. I'll be honest. I really don't like it that much. I've seen it really? in some theaters and I'm like, oh, it when I, I saw it, didn't movie. really, it's not like I, it's not like I fucking hate it, but it was just kind of, I don't know. It felt kind of like by the numbers and at no point did I really feel like, you know, man, I get you. I get where you're coming from. He, and I know it was a different time, but he's just like, you know, these poor, stupid fucking savages, they just need me to slay them. So like, just push, show them the light. And the movie's like, yeah, we want to show you the light the whole way. Or or it's like, it, I don't know. And it kind of bounces back and forth between trying to present him as a hero and a villain, but it doesn't really, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really hate the movie, and it's, I'm not going to like try and hate on a movie for like trying to, because, you know, it was, it was shitty fucking times. So I, I kind of get why they kind of sh- show a story of a character like that. But at the same time, it's just, I, I don't know. It just didn't really jump out at me. It felt like every other kind of rise and fall Sword and Sandals, Sword and Sandals movie, you know? Huh, I, I fucking love that movie. But then again, I love Oliver Stone. You know, this, those kind of stories to me are always like, I love those big fucking epics. Yeah, that's true. That one was, I mean, there's Troy. There was a handful of ones about that similar time period. It's, you know what really, I think, did it? It was 300, because I think when 300 came out, I think all the producers sat back and went, huh. So, I think Troy was before 300. No, think, no, Troy think, is before I, 300. No, 300's yeah. the movie, because see, Troy's before that. But when 300 came out, and Alexander's before 300 as well, too. But when 300 came out, that was the movie I think a bunch of producers sat back and went, so you don't need to have the full island. You don't need to have all the extras. Shit, you don't even have to have good fucking costumes. Why the fuck have our directors and writers been lying to us all these times? Fuck, get that Zack Snyder boy over here. He knows what's going on. He knows that you don't need to spend a whole lot of money to make it, you know, an epic movie. Well, I'll say 300. I think it works for that because it's made to look very, like, over the top and kind of surreal. Well, because it's a comic uh, just... book. I think that's where it gets, like, the... It gives it a comic book feel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think by having that CG thing. But I'm just saying is that that's kind of the start where you... I think, And I think that's what it was. Is like, people looked and they're like, well, fuck those Kevin Costner. Like... He's got this big grand scheme idea of all this real shit. We don't need real shit. Let's get some fucking nerds in here on their computers, and that's what we'll do instead. <laughs> well, speaking of that, the thing is, I, well, I think some movies, like like you said, justly, because I was well, I saw that a little bit again, a little bit ago too, and I still like the movie. But there is a big noticeable thing of certain battles really look like they're on a soundstage. And, and I kind of get why. I totally understand why. And it's not so much of... Like, the, the, the whole the whole part with the Amazonians fighting and the Atlante, Atlanteans fighting, all that. Like, it's a cool scene, but yeah. I, I can tell that's one big cartoon. And it's, it's I'm not going to really dock the me for that because, I mean, every movie has that now. But the thing that... It, there's, I could kind of almost more than that. I, can, I feel like I can tell what parts were reshoots. Like, I feel like that in that movie, watched again, Batman seems a little stiffer in this movie. Maybe it's just to depower him, so he looks a little weaker and compared to everybody else. But I noticed, like, the, uh, in Batman v Superman, he's, like, really fluid. He's, like, he's, like, you know, doing, like, two things ahead. He's, like, he was acting like Batman in that fight where he's fighting those 12 guys at once. Like, he's doing three things at once. Like, slamming one dude's head on the fucking... On the fucking, like, uh, box, shooting a fucking grappling gun, pulling it over, hitting the guy behind him, punches the guy in front of him while he does that. It was just, like, that was one of the best action scenes in a Batman movie. And then, regardless of what you think of the rest of that movie. Uh-huh. But then this one, he's just very stiff. Like, the whole... A lot of the fight, he's really stiff. Not all the time. But, like, when he first comes in fighting that one parademon, and, I mean, it's, it wasn't bad, but at the same time, it's just kind of noticeable. I no, like I, I, I did kind of notice that too when I watched it again too. I'm like, you know what? Batman doesn't really have... I love how you use the word depower because you got the character that's got the least amount of power out of everybody fucking there. And so who are they going to depower? <laughs> fucking Batman. But it is kind of <laughs> true. It's like, I kind of thought about that too my second time watching it. Like, I mean, it, it didn't like bring the movie down or anything, but I just kind of like, oh fuck, they kind of like... Batman doesn't do a whole lot of fucking fighting. He like, you know, grabs a gun. He throws like one fucking like proximity... Like, Batarang, he throws a couple punches, but that's about it. Like, at the end of the day, he, he, fucking Wonder Woman and Aquaman are doing way more fucking fighting than anybody else. Hell, fucking Flash is probably throwing more punches, or pushes, I guess you could call them, than fucking Batman is. It's weird. 
Well, you see that part where he's like, when they're all fighting Steppenwolf and Batman's on top of the ledge, like, you guys got this, don't worry! <laughs> yeah, I know he's got that going on and everything too, so... Yeah, it's it's kind of weird how that is, but no, I you know you notice that it's like it's, you think about Justice League that should be the biggest movie known to mankind at the end of the day, but sometimes it's like without having the actual fucking like locations and the actual fucking sound stages and so on, or I mean not sound stages but real life world places, and you notice that you can kind of just see the CG. You can kind of I mean not, once again every movie does this. I mean that's just how movies are sort of made, but. It makes them feel sometimes smaller in weird ways than, you know, it's just, it's when you watch an older movie, that's what really does it. You watch one of these old movies, you are know, like, fuck, fuck, look how many extras are standing there. There's just tons of people standing. I mean, some of them might be stand-ups, if anything, but still, it blows your mind. You know, just the things that they would build for these movies that, you, you know, they would never do nowadays. I feel like the, uh, not to be just a, a Star Wars bitch here... But I feel like the out of the two new Star Wars movies that have come out, even though there's some definitely stages in that movie, of course, but I they, they do shoot a lot on location, and that kind of shows that movie. And I think that's one of the things... I know how you feel about the prequels, but I, I think that's one of the things that a lot of the, 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 the last two prequels are kind of lacking, just a shot shooting on location, because those movies all feel like they're on a green screen, where those two, like, oh, they really feel like they're on some weird little forest world, or they feel like they're on... The other Tatooine, whatever it's called. Yeah, no, I, I know what you, when you, that's the thing, is that when you use a little bit of light or like actual locations, and then you can always expand the scene with CG and so on, it does make a difference. You know, there, there is just something to be said about that kind of stuff. And hell, even if you're using like just a made up set, like in a fucking warehouse, that looks way more real than just doing a fake CG one, you know? Mm -hmm. But. Well, it's funny. I actually sent him to go see... Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in detail in, in a little while because I know you probably want to say a couple more things about this, but I went to go see uh, The Disaster Artist today and it's oh, yeah? just some of the small things. Like the deep... Like that kind of like that misguided idea of like what makes a movie big, what makes a movie realistic. And he's just like, okay, we're going to shoot an alley scene. Okay, we're going to shoot alley scene now. He's just like, we, we made a replica of the alley? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, well... the we got the real alley right across from us who could shoot it in. You'd be like, it's real movie, Hollywood movie. We ain't make it big. Okay, that's cool. Well, what year does this movie take place in? So that idea of just like, um, takes place like in 1999. <laughs> that's a weird fucking time. Well, it's, it's based on a true story, so. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense then. I, I know nothing about this movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk to you about it in a little while. Is there anything you wanted to say about big epic movies and all that? Yeah, probably. I could talk about those for fucking days, but if you want to go on to something else, be my guest. Okay. Well, um, I went to go see this movie today, and basically, have you ever, you never seen The Room, have you? Mm, what's The Room? Sounds familiar. It's, uh... A lot of people make fun of it for being one of the worst movies made of recent year. And, oh, I remember um, you talked about this for it's a basically, long time. Yeah, well, it's just it's not a it's not a really good movie, but a lot of people love it because uh. how bad the movie is. Now, it's some now what they did is uh, the movie has a huge like cult following, and even a lot of celebrities like it. The very beginning of the movie, they have different celebrities talking how much they like it. They have like Kevin Smith, Kristen Wiig. Uh, Key and Peele, or, or at least one of them, J.J. Abrams, um, more celebrities that I'm drawing a blank on right now, and uh, basically it's just this movie about how it got made, and it stars James Franco and his brother Dave Franco, and it's based on the book. Now, I never read the oh, book Oh, is that myself, that Seth Rogen movie? Seth Rogen's, uh, he's, he's not a big star in the movie. He's a oh, side okay. guy. And he's, yeah, I, and I, I'll, saw, I'll saw the movie I, poster for that one. I kind of was like, ah, I don't know. Seth Rogen is like, that, that, that's where I just, I'm like, I didn't care any farther. And I, I learned that James Frank or James Franco or Dave Franco. I am thrown off now. Whatever. But like he becomes, James the, Franco is the, is the one what? that, yeah, the common one. I don't know what it is. It's like he becomes, like, not funny when he's in the same room as Seth Rogen. It's weird how that fucking is. He's funny by himself, and the second that he's, like, put together as Seth Rogen, his comedy fucking changes. It's weird. 
Well, in this movie, he's playing the guy because the the room was made by a guy named Tommy Wiseau, and uh-huh. he is a very weird, eccentric. He's he's kind of sh- he's kind of like I, I, after watching the room, I try to look it up. I couldn't really find a whole lot on him, but this is what I remember hearing about him. It was just one of these, and who knows what's true? Because no one even knows how now how old he is. Because he said he was like in his twenties when he was making this movie. It's like you look at him like no, you're like in your fucking like m- maybe your early maybe your your late forties maybe. Um, he because uh, he's a weird looking guy. Um, uh-huh. He uh, he. He got into like an accident and almost killed him and used that money to invest in real estate. And then also he did stuff at the, uh, he was in San Francisco. He used to uh, sell toys at Fisherman's Wharf. He got, kind of knows that. Also sold very cheap jeans. At a lo- like like very expensive jeans for a low, low price and like big stock warehouse. Like just weird miscellaneous things like that. Now this is just what I've read. And this is what's known. I don't know how much of it's true and because there's more about him, which he tries to be a secret and hidden about who he is. So, um, and he has a very thick Eastern European accent and even takes him in like, what the fuck is that? It's hard to pick up on. And um, they just decided to make a movie. Uh, him and his friend that he had he met in an acting class decided to make a movie. And this guy is just a millionaire, but he doesn't, you don't really know it. You don't really like, you have the money for this? Yeah, like you have this like, how about we move to LA? Like, well, I don't... Uh, no, I don't have, don't have. I can't afford to live in L.A. I have an apartment there. Like, what, you have an apartment in L.A. and San Francisco? Yeah. You can afford huh. both? Yeah. Not a big deal. It's just weird things like that. And I'm not, you know, he, he talks like this, and he's very kind of weird. He, that's how he talks. We're not going to do in person the whole time because that'll get annoying. But uh, James Franco does a good job. And it, it's a movie just chronicles of just how they're trying to make it. And Seth Rogen, he's not really trying to be the funny pothead who with, with the perfect line every other he has the perfect thing to say he's more the voice of reason and he just happens to be there huh that's interesting because james franco actually direct because james franco actually directed this movie oh that's cool Mm -hmm. yeah it sounds like an interesting story of a movie if anything well it's also this thing like the guy is like the guy who made the movie is mentally off like it's kind of hard to read where he's going exactly because the real like you know you could say something to him and then suddenly he'll be really offended really easily. So it's kind of goes very, cause the movie, cause I assume the movie is just going to rip up, rip on him and kick him in the balls the whole time. But it's actually kind of very back and forth. It tries to make you feel for him at the same time though. There are moments where it does just flip it on its back and just like, no, fuck this guy. He's a fucking asshole. They like, like, I don't know how much of it is true. Um, I heard someone say who did read the book that it's pretty accurate. It's not so much what they changed, just what they left out just for the sake of time. Yeah. Uh, but there's a part where, because he's an actor struggling and he's trying to like, this is the first job. The, the, the main guy, Dave Franco, because uh, he's, it's it's based on the book that actor wrote because the, the, the uh, second guy in the movie, the, 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 uh, the supporting character, his name, what's his real name? The character in the movie's Mark. Uh, I'm trying to blank on the guy's real name. But anyway, the guy that Dave Franco plays, he is just having trouble getting a job. So his friend's like, I'm going to make my own movie. Just you wait and see. It's going to be amazing. So he makes, he writes this script. And he's like, oh, you want me to be the secondary character? Uh, okay. And they make the movie. And at some point, he bumps shoulders with Brian Cranston, who his girlfriend knows from Pilates class. And I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of funny just because it's 1999. So it's just like, oh, my God, that's Brian Cranston. He's in Malcolm in the Middle. Oh yeah, they they're going with those references, <laughs> like like that kind of. It's not jam packed with those, but it's like every once in a while something you'll see like an actor that everyone like. Now, oh yeah, so and so, and then they're like, oh yeah, it's not now, it's then. So it's Malcolm the Middle or something else like that. Yeah, and, um, he was... he, he's he's given an opportunity like like Brian Cranston. Like, oh, so you're acting? Okay, well I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, you got this beard going on. We have this episode that I'm actually directing for Malcolm in the Middle. The boys get lost and they're found by a lumberjack fella. Uh, we're shooting. It takes two days. Just come by and uh, we'll help you out. I'm like, oh, awesome. But then uh, he has to shave the beard for for uh, the room. And the guy goes on power trip saying like, no, you can't go. You're in my movie. He's like, yeah, but it's Malcolm in the Middle. It's a big show. It's <laughs> Everyone's going to see it. Just give me a chance. And from there on in, he doesn't get let him do it. And it causes friction. So, Huh. That sounds like kind of an interesting movie. 
I'd recommend seeing it. I want to go. Uh, it's it's just I'll, I'll I'll say this. I mean, when you go see the movie, they actually show side by side like scenes that are very awkward and shot. But if you see the movie first, the the, the actual room, and then go see this, it's it makes it's a lot more like like oh that's how that line got there. Oh that's what that's referencing or you know that kind of thing. Well, yeah, it feels like it'd be kind of dumb to see this movie without seeing the room. Like that'd be kind of weird. I mean, I guess you could watch the movie and then it might make you yeah, go, like, no, right, I kind of want to see The Room. So I guess there is a way to do it. But Let me put it this way. The Room is definitely one of those movies, you don't go watch it by yourself. If you watch it by yourself, you'll be depressed and you'll be like, the fuck am I doing? Because this is a uh-huh. bad movie. It's more of a movie you watch, and some, some other friends showed it to me. It's more one of those movies you watch, maybe when you have a beer in you or two. And, like, someone else is there to laugh. Like, what the fuck is that? Because it's very fucking awkward. It's awkward. There's, like, within the first 15 minutes of the movie, there's three sex scenes. Oh, so it's one of those kind of movies. Well, it's not a total porn fest, but it's just very awkwardly placed. Just very random out of nowhere. Dude gets home, just bought a dress... Or, no, dude gets home... Um, I want to say it's been like at least two or three years since I've seen it. Um, dude gets home, has a sex scene with his lady. Lady has a conversation with his with her with her mom. Then we then cut back to like the next day. He has a quick conversation with them. There's some kid that's just hanging around. Like the kids, like <laughs> this is funny because there's this kid and there. There's just some kid hanging around him. Everyone's asking, "What's this kid's motivation? What's what's his relation to them? Why's this kid hanging out with them? Oh, he's just kid. He's just he's like parent figure. He's like child to them. He's it's like, like parent okay, figure. Um, how how old? You know, he's, he's like I, I, I stumble over words. He's like the main guy is like a parent figure to him. So like, he's like a child to them. This and that. Like okay, um, how old is the kid? Oh, uh, your age, around 17. Like, I'm 26. <laughs> so it's got some kind so of, like a lot of weird comedy in it, too. It's it's like, it actually, it's not like a total, because for a second, am I, I going to go see like an Apatow movie that just happens to be based on a true story? But it's actually, even though the comedy is consistent, there are moments where it breaks down and it actually acts kind of like real drunk, but it's just still, it's funny, just because Tommy Wiseau is just such a weird-looking fucking character. And, um... It's it, anyway. So the, so the kids hanging out with them before they have like fucking sex. Like hey guys, like, he knows what's gonna happen. He's just kind of lingering. When you watch the movie, it's kind of awkward, and it's even kind of doubly awkward when you watch it in this movie because when they show in front of the audience for the first time, the kids hanging around after like right before they're about to have sex, their whole audience is like, what the fuck is going on? Just looking back and forth at each other. Huh. Yeah, that sounds like what. Well, yeah, that definitely sounds like kind of a fucking weird movie. I mean, the the real one. That's what I'm thinking of. It is. Well, know. it's more of like here's what happens. Here's what happens when you give a very unchecked guy like just a lot of money to make whatever he wants. He, I mean, he already had the money. Who knows how he actually got it? But um, yeah, when he just it, like it's just this weird like. Guy with a vision who is very incompetent. Plus, you know, there's a lot of scenes where it actually does get really intense because there's a part where he's having, like, there's a set, one of the sex scenes in the movie. And he says, like, what's this on the girl? Like, what? That's just my skin. Like, there's a pimple there. That does get makeup. We can't have ugly girl in the movie. Like, this and that. And people start getting ready to have, get in a fight. And it's actually a very dramatic scene for a second. His friend runs to him. He's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He says, you can't talk to people that way. Like, I'm acting like Alfred Hitchcock or Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> It, it just sounds like, because those always sound like those kind of director people you meet every once in a while that, like, they're almost, like, way too creative, way too artsy. They have they think they have this vision, but they really don't, you know? I don't know. You see those people every once in a while, and it almost makes you kind of laugh and almost kind of cringe all at the same time because you feel kind of bad for them because you know that they're, like, partially off and somehow, some way they want to do something, which, I mean, you always got to give people credit for wanting to do stuff, but that doesn't always mean that... You might have the right idea of what to do. That's what this movie does. And there's even a scene where... Because he always plays it off like he intended for this movie to be what it is. When people on the set... Most people hate him. Um, he's still friends with the main guy. and um, Or with the uh, side supporting character. Um, but then, like... Uh, what was I going to say regarding this? But in the movie, there's a part when like when he's in the theater and everyone's laughing at all the awkward parts. 
they show in this montage and the laughter is ridiculously loud, especially in the theater. Like the theater, it's laughing and it almost sounds kind of, it sounds, sounds faintly distorted and he just kind of sinks in. You kind of see it's kind of cutting to him rapidly and it's just really kind of getting to him. He gets out of the theater and he's like basically on the verge of tears. And then the, then, uh, the guy that plays Mark goes out and says, dude, no, I mean, maybe it's not what you intended, but who else has had a re- reaction like this? And goes in there, everyone's laughing and clapping, and he's like, oh, it's not what I wanted, but it's something that better than that, you know? Yeah, it's just that kind where somebody thought they were making a serious movie, and then it turns out it's like, oh, that's not how any of the audience seems to interpret it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's it kind of ends on like a positive note, like, oh, so, yeah, this movie's fucking bad, but at the same time, it's so weird and, and obscure that you know it's it holds up today in some aspect now i'm going to say this it's not a movie i want to go out and own it It, it's worth seeing at least once or twice just to say you saw it and like Uh when you do watch it watch it with some friends because you're going to want someone else to laugh at otherwise just like am i just watching the longest tim and eric sketch yeah i I don't know yeah it sounds like those movies like like almost like years ago it would have been that movie you would have sought, you know, sought out to see just because it sounds like, oh, it's such a bad movie, I should see this like as an educational piece. But nowadays, I seem to not care about that nearly as often, so it's like, oh, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. Like Sometimes watching bad movies just to watch bad movies, like, I'm not really into that nearly anymore. Mm-hmm. Like i rather see just like, it's like well, I guess because one of those ones you come to the point where you're like, fuck, I only have so much time in life, I might as well spend it watching good movies. I know some people would be like, yeah, but you, those good movies you watch is something like Pixels. I'm like, hey, well, fuck, I, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> it's, it's hard to kind of back that up after you see it, you see something like that, but it's like, I don't know, I, I didn't think that was bad. I mean, my, my, my taste of bad is much different than others, but this this one sounds like it's like legitimately like I mean, obviously, nobody's trying to make a bad movie, but unless you're those mm-hmm. epic movie people, then I feel like you are trying to make a bad movie. But still, I think those guys they just they, they don't care. They know people see. I'm I'm, I'm hoping. I, I have no. You know what? I don't feel bad saying this. I'm hoping those guys don't have careers because all those guys do. You can say what you will about how how dumb Tommy Wiseau is, but those guys all they do is it's like they could like watch a trailer to a movie that came out that year and then like just crowbar it in there and it barely like if you ever I remember watching a couple of those epic movies, um, like you know disaster movie, epic movie, whatever. Yeah, I never not, watched not, those. I'm, I'm, they, they run together. They 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 run together. I, I remember I watched one or two. I watched two of them. Just to, uh, just, well, which, which ones were they? I saw Epic Movie, which was god-awful, and then I want to say, I mean, they, they all run together. I don't fucking remember which one it was. Maybe it was We Are the Spartans, or or, or the, We Are the Spartans, I th- or Meet the Spartans, or some shit like that. What they do is, they just, it's like, they, it's like maybe they saw one of these movies, and then they went and looked at trailers to other movies that came out that year, and just dropped them in the background. And... I remember one of them I just watched just so I can justifiably say I hate it. And then I'm just like, what? why am I even doing this to myself? I already know this is going to be a piece of shit, so <laughs> fuck this movie. And, <laughs> yeah, I a disaster movie. That was the other one. Yeah, fuck. Fuck those movies. I can only say I hope those guys don't have careers because they just literally leech off. And, yeah, I could say, oh, they're big corporate movies anyway. Well, at least someone in those, I think, care about what they're doing. These guys literally leech off whatever just came out and do, like, some little... Just for the sake of having a reference. And, like, one of them is, like, it's epic movie. And they're walking through, like, this part. We're getting ready for this big fucking Battle of Narnia kind of thing. And they walk by, like, oh, look, there's the X-Men camp. There's Talladega Nights. What? Oh, okay, because that came out that year. Okay. So, and it's like, what the fuck? It's just so, it's like... Fuck those movies. Fuck those guys. Well, those are those kind of movies, like, I, I always look at them, like, you can see where being, like, the actor in those movies, be like, yeah, this is a fun, easy paycheck. You just come out, have laughs, and so on. But, like, yeah, there's, I feel like there's no material to it at the very end. You know, the end result is not, like, anything worthwhile. But I can see why people would, you know, because you're like, fuck, this is an easy paycheck. I can see why an actor would go to one of those just to fucking do it, just to do it. But, yeah, no. I mean, I don't want to say, like, yeah, I hope these guys don't have careers. I mean, obviously, they found a niche, and it obviously works because they kept making fucking movies. So, I mean, I guess you got to always give them credit for that. You know, it's like, I, 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 I watched a scary movie, and I didn't even care for scary movie. and So I never went any farther than that. Well, all right, let me put it this way. These guys, 
maybe that's maybe it's a little too harsh to say. I hope they don't have a career. Hopefully, they just found a real career. Hopefully, they're just not doing the not even the not even like the uh, the Target like the the Kmart version, the Kmart comedies of like all these other shit that came out. You know, um, it's just it one of those things. Just one, I remember just good. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know what those movies technically were? Those movies were like proto like internet humor because. It's yeah. like, that's sort of like, you know, you see so much of that stuff online where it's just people just poking fun at certain movies just for no fucking reason at all, just because they can. And those movies were almost like, hey, let's do that. I mean, the internet existed, obviously, but it wasn't like video internet yet, you know, and that's almost like what those kind of are. It sounds weird, but it's just like the stuff you see online. It's like, that's fucking garbage, you know, internet TV, I guess you can say. That's almost like how those movies are. It's just that's what they went with. And. I mean, as I said, like, they obviously do good enough that fucking people are making fucking careers off them. So I guess if somebody's making money, you always got to go, eh, they, they found a path, you know, at the end of the day. There's that. I mean, I'm not going to watch it. You know, I get, once again, it comes down to that. You only got so much time. I'm going to spend it watching not something I want to watch. I'm going to watch fucking Spartacus, you know. That's what I'm going to choose. Something from Stanley Kubrick. Something that will enrich your mind. You know, one of those ones that's got fucking, you know, fucking Kirk Douglas in it and stuff, you know. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's also, I think, funny you should bring that around, because Spartacus, that was one of the mo first movies, like, there's actually a book out called Roman Soldiers Don't Wear Sports Watches, because if you look, there's, like, the one Roman soldier still has his watch on. Yeah, he's like, fuck, I, I gotta keep time. You know what I mean? I gotta take, like, my yeah. pill every, you know, two hours or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, all movies, like, you know, in the olden days, you know, if somebody fucked up like that, it wasn't, like, nowadays. You can't CG, CG that out. Yeah, yeah so... And I feel like that's there's nothing wrong with things like that. It's like that's just that's a little movie magic I get in it. there, you know. I just I get that. Yeah, it was, it was a book that like pointed out like just weird inaccuracies or just weird little like mistakes made in movies. Just this big encyclopedia of it. Like, oh, that's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. But nowadays, I'm not. That's not me kicking a movie in a dick. But it's just kind of interesting. Just like I don't know how what, what point I was gonna make around, but I come back to that. But yeah, whatever. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just that kind of thing where, like, and I think that's what it is, like, going back to, like, that kind of point, talk about, like, when you're kind of getting in the movies, you feel like you gotta watch, like, the full spectrum. You gotta watch the best movies ever made, and you almost gotta watch the worst movies ever made, and it's like, you'll learn from, like, everything, and I think that's probably where you came around watching some of those, like, you know, fucking scary movies and epic movies and so on. Kind of like, there's that point where you think, like, oh, I gotta watch this. I gotta watch the C-grade movies. And then, yeah, then I just feel like, you get to a point where you're like, nah, I'm just gonna stick with just good movies. You know what I mean? I don't have to go out of my way anymore. It's just like, let's just stick to, you know, I've watched enough movies in time, I can just continuously just watch what I like now. Well, my thought process was, uh, if, I, if, it, if it pleases the court, my thought process was, if I just watch one of them or two of them then i would just give me justifying people say why are you mad at this thing you didn't see and then i was just like well because of this that and what you know whatever and then thinking back on it, like i was halfway through one of them because i watched one of them completely the other one i was halfway through and it wasn't like i was on a marathon they're just they have me on hbo or whatever <laughs> and uh <laughs> like i just went to like blockbuster at the time like okay here Four we go for 20. This stack <laughs> yeah this big stack of just these shitty fucking movies Where's and, your um, shitty movie no, section? Right. <laughs> just go over there. No, and uh, watching it and just like, oh my god, this is. I was like part way through one of them. I was just like, you know, fuck this. I already know this is bad. Why am I even? I don't need to justify. It. You can look at the fucking trailer. You know, it's a fucking bad movie. Anyone defending this movie? Fuck them. They don't know fucking movies. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's just one of those ones. I mean, like, here's the thing. It's like, the audience that's sold to that is probably people that just want to come home and drink a couple beers and have a light laugh, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to look at, like, the most positive way I can look at who the target audience are selling it to. You know, I mean, it's probably poorly educated people that have shitty jobs and... <laughs> I mean, that that's obviously who who likes the movie. But you know, here's like you know who probably likes the movie is kind of dumb kids because you know you know when you're a kid, you watch stupid shit, and I could just see like a fucking mm -hmm. like ten year old kids going, oh, let's go fly, <laughs> let's go get Slurpees. We're going to see. 
I remember going to see, funny you should say that, because I, I remember going to see, uh, it's different actors, but I remember going to see, um, it's actually the guy who did Naked Gun and all that, Scary Movie 4 in theaters. Not that I really wanted to, it was just some other friend of mine wanted to go, I'm like, alright, I'll go along with you, and he wasn't clear on what time it was, so uh-huh. or what time the movie was, so I went there, and he called me, like, uh, ten minutes before the movie started, and it takes me, like, 15, like, takes me, like, 20 20 minutes to get there or something like that so i was like um okay it must be at this showing so go to the show where the fuck are they and they walk out and then like i see them like i see them i don't even see i don't see their car anywhere when i go when i come back out like motherfucker it must have been an early show I'm like what like hey you didn't come to the show like you call it takes me 20 minutes to fucking get there you call me 10 minutes before i thought we were going to a later showing i stopped that stupid piece of shit for no fucking reason now I was like mad at him for a couple days. Oh, that's hilarious. I don't know. I, I remember one time it was like I think it was when Matrix Three came out, and like it was like, oh dude, let's go fucking see Matrix Three, and like everybody's like, yeah, fucking go see Matrix Three, and then we get to the theater, and I kid you not, everybody fucking jumps ship except for one person. I think Josh. They're like, oh dude, Scary Movie Three is out. Let's go see that instead. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Matrix Three is out, and you're gonna go see fucking Scary Movie instead. Yeah, that's it was, that. That was fucking right like, there. yeah. It's just like, Jesus well, Christ. I'm on one of their IMDb's right now. I just, I just had a no. Um, let's see. Last thing they made was something called Super Fast in 2015. If I had to guess, that's probably a Fast and Furious. Parody yeah, I think I, I saw the assume. cover of it and it was like, yeah, yeah, I could tell what that is. Fucking. And then there's, oh my, Jesus. Fucking Christ. Jesus. <sighs> Alright, get ready for this. Go for it. Fucking shit. Star Worlds episode... Th- 32 Jesus or something Christ. like that. It's Roman numeral... It's Roman, nu- it's, norm- it's Roman numeral 32 or 37 MC squared The Force Awakens The Last Jedi Who Went to Rogue. Yeah, God, it's just like... Fuck these people. I mean, I, once again... Fuck I, I them. Mean, I'll give them credit for the fact that somebody's still fucking giving them money to do it. Like, at the end of the day, it's really... It's not fuck these guys, it's fuck the people that watch it. I think that's what you really mean more than anything else. Because clearly these guys have found a loophole to make fucking money. I say fuck... I'm just saying they're, they're like fucking leeches going off what other people fucking make. That's what bothers me. If it was their own stupid shit, I mean, that's what I was saying. The room, it's something fucking stupid, but it's mm-hmm. something original. Well, yeah, no, I, I always say that's like the internet in itself is just how many people just fuck. It's like, you know, people like honest trailers and things like that. I mean, they're really no different than the fucking epic movie guys. At the end of the day, they're the same thing. They just use other people's stuff, talk shit on it, and then make fucking money from that. So, I mean, like, and there's an audience not, for it, obviously, because these things keep going on, you know what I mean? Like, and I'll, I'll say this, you mentioned something like the Naked Gun, that's almost like the proto-proto version of all these kind of things, and I never could get into, even as a kid, I never could really get into the Naked Gun, I never, even Airplane, I always thought was a little too much for me, and even, um, uh, fucking, uh, God damn it, I can't think of what it is. There's, Naked oh, Gun, uh, Airplane, um, uh, Hot Shots? Yeah, Hot Shots, there was that movie, which I remember seeing that one, and I was like, oh, fuck, you got you got um Charlie Sheen and um oh what's his name from fucking Two and a Half Men like proto fucking Two and a Half Men movie I'm like this is gonna be amazing and it's like oh no it's just another one of those I don't know like movies that are like hardcore slapstick dumb parodies they just don't work for me it's just I don't know that's that to me is just like I I I, I it's just I don't get it I mean obviously there's a target audience that likes that stuff because those things have always existed throughout time but. I said, well, maybe I'll say Naked Gun every once. I mean, once in a while, Naked Gun. Well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. You, you, there is jokes that will be funny because that goes back. I have a saying that it doesn't matter how dumb your jokes are. If you keep throwing jokes out there, you will eventually hit something funny. You know what I mean? I just feel like what makes a good comedian is that they can get there quicker than a bad comedian. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. that's what it is. But, but yeah, it's just I don't know. To me, it's like okay. The, my borderline that I draw is like Mel Brooks. You know what I mean? Because Mel Brooks can still make a good movie and even have a little bit of slapstick in there. But it's still a good movie. You know, where some of these other ones are just almost too dumb. You know? I mean, it's, yeah, Hot Shots is really... That, that is no different than like these epic movies, but that's like the epic movie of like 89 and, 
93 or whatever, you know, those two came out. And it's like Top Gun and Rambo and all that stuff. Well, I'll say, maybe not Hot Shots, but I'll say say something like uh, uh, Naked Gun. From what I do remember seeing that movie, it kind of had its own original character. And um, I want to say some of the humor in it was just a little bit more clever. And even Quentin Tarantino made a reference to this. He said, like, what was funny about those movies wasn't, like, the big bombastic joke. It was when he'd throw coffee off screen and you hear someone off in the distance scream, My eye! And on top of that, though, he all, like, those movies kind of had their own characters. And I know people say, well, scary movie or epic movie has its own characters. Yeah, well, they're just taking characters that just filter through the same scenarios from all these other fucking movies where that's just, okay, we're poking fun at this genre rather than what came out that year. And I feel like that's kind of... Somebody made this com- comparison. I think... I mean, technically, when you think about it, um, the, the Edgar Wright, um, Simon Pegg trilogy, that, to some extent, is still spoof, but it's more poking fun at the parody. It's po- po- poking fun at the genre, but still has its own original story to tell. Now, that's way better than Naked Gun, if you ask me. But... I, I can kind of see what they mean there. Because the, the, what Hot Fuzz does is it presents all the cliches of action movies saying, mm-hmm. you don't fucking do that. That's not how it happens. It's by the books. Realize that. They add a little bit more of like some personal stuff in there that they were both going through when they were making the movie. And then they drop in the shit. You know, fuck it. We are going to do it like the fucking movies in the last act and catches you off guard. And they're acting and saying one-liners. So mm-hmm. that is a parody, but that's a, that's a good parody. That's and not this I, I, bullshit. And it's that, like sort of a parody, fuck, but these... I would even put it in the parody category. That's almost like, I mean, I, I know, I know I could see where somebody could. Well, cause it's acknowledging it. the reason I, is, I don't know, like, when I think of slapstick, I mean, like, yeah, I'll say, I'll give Naked Gun, I will say, I give it the credit of like, you know, it kind of has its own thing. It's got its own character. I mean, I guess you could maybe say it's a parody on, you know, different spoof TV shows and movies and so on. Like, probably if you watched a lot of those 60s, 70s ones, you would see all the references really well. But, um, I don't know, that's, that's a lot of times, that that's always like, I always call that easy comedy. Easy comedy is just pretty much, you know, making jokes off other people's stuff. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's like, you know, the simple one. And it, like, you know, I guess someone could say, yeah, both, you know, Hot Fuzz and even um, Shaun of the Dead. But I think what makes those movies, because that's why, I mean, like when I first saw the Shaun of the Dead trailer, that's literally what I thought. I'm like, oh, it's one of these fucking movies are just going to be making fun of fucking zombie shit. Because this was still a time where zombie stuff was like almost sacred. You couldn't, you're like, don't fucking be making fun of, like, how much more kicking in the ground do we need right now? So... And then you see, you finally see the movie, you're like, oh, it's not that at all. It's actually fucking extreme love for it. And the only thing it is, is just like, here's these guys in a real situation. I think that's what makes both those movies good. They're not like joke movies. They're like, it's actually like real, like going on action, but it just happens to have kind of a couple silly characters in there that, you know, that will have fun with it. And that's like the difference. But, but yeah, other than that though, I guess we got to wrap this old thing up. It's getting close to about that time, but Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got one more thing you want to say to that? I, I was going to say the uh, the thing about that is because all those movies kind of address the tropes and the things that happen in those genres. Whether it's kind of like, this is what happens in an action movie or this is what happens in a zombie movie. It just happens to have real characters and a real story that moves along and it treats it well with, with respect rather than how these guys just treat it like a fucking used condom. They keep trading back and forth. Yeah, they just go off references, and that's about it. Just like, oh, remember this? Remember when they did this epic scene? Remember when they did that? Yeah, and it's just like, that's kind of annoying. But but yeah, that's the mm-hmm. thing. Boy, this is like the episode where it's like, we're going to talk about some of the best movies ever made where people spent fucking tons and tons of money and were so scared that that director was going to bankrupt their fucking movie studio to all the movies that are just pure crap. But guess what? Dre, you know, the movie studios love them because they still make fucking money. Not like that fucking Kevin Costner guy that always seemed to fuck him over for years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it was also Kevin Costner's attitude when he was like, people. Maybe he's, maybe, no, 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 I mean... He's back like, man. No, no, no. That, what I'm talking about is because there's like that period where Kevin Costner just kept making these big fucking movies and everybody's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's going to be the next yeah. Dances with Wolves. And then it was always like, fuck, Kevin, quit making fucking expensive movies. They're like, well, that, that, that's what Dances with Wolves was. You, you fucking love that one. Well, yeah, because it made fucking money. All these other movies you make cost more money than we even get back. There's just not enough fucking humans in America. It's the 90s. You know what I mean? Come on, Kevin. <laughs> Because that's how it was. It's like, because everybody yeah, has that's... that. Wyatt Earp's fucking amazing. 
fucking Postman's amazing, Waterworld's amazing, but Waterworld. none of those movies could fucking make that money they, back. I like how they go more and more into sci-fi as they go on. Yeah, I know, they kind of go there. But on um, that, that, we got to wrap this bad boy up. So that's Old Man Orange podcast, podcast for this week. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. Won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks for listening, and tune in next week to Old Man Orange. Oi, this is the Bravs of the Bravs.com. If you want a podtastic podcasting Christmas, be good. We're not officially Santa's helpers, but we're watching you.